guys, Auto Fanatic. I'm gonna do a review of my brand new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. This is a very, very special car. I'm just gonna go over some of the key details of the car, a little bit of the story of this car and the development, show you the inside, the outside, that we're gonna strap it uh, in the car and we're gonna go for a ride. So uh, for the most part, I was looking for a new daily driver. I can't drive the GT350 anymore every day. It's just totally beating me up. And I just missed having a luxury super sedan, sports sedan. Well, out of all the sedans in the segment, I looked at the M3, there is no more ATS-V sedan. They stopped making it. This is the pinnacle sports sedan in the category now, is the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. It is a four-door Ferrari, no joke. Every journalist around the world has praised this car, and I'm gonna tell you now, a lot of those videos are a couple of years old already, and those are pre-production cars. There's been a lot of changes to the last production run of these cars. And these cars are a hell of a lot better now with the braking system, with the chassis rigidity. Some of the earlier cars had a little bit of a rubbing, rubbing issue in the rear of the car, uh, differential noise, all that good stuff. But all of that stuff's been addressed. The quality control is spot on. This is every good is every bit as good as a Mercedes-Benz or BMW product all day long. But it is a premium segment. This is $85,000 car, the way this is spec'd out. This is fully loaded with all options except the carbon ceramic brakes. It's painted in Volcano metallic black. It has Alfa Rosso Brembo brake calipers. It has the dark Technico forged alloy wheels. And uh, the interior is red and black with Alcantara with the full carbon fiber Sparco racing seats. So let me just uh, walk around the car and I'm show gonna show you guys a couple of really cool details of this car. Another thing too I wanted to talk about is a lot of the venting in the car is very, very specific because this car was developed in Ferrari's wind tunnel. The same wind tunnel that develops all of the Ferrari supercars and the Formula One cars. So everything on this car, every opening, every grill, every cutout serves a purpose to increase aerodynamics and increase cooling and reduce lift on the front end. That's how amazing this car is designed. And I'll tell you one thing, this is a very special car because for Alfa Romeo to come back to the United States, there was a multi-billion dollar investment for FCA to develop this car. And they took all the resources and all the top engineers that they could from Marinello and they put it into this car. And once you drive it, once you experience it, you guys will totally get what, I, what I'm talking about because I work on a lot of Ferraris. I've been working on them for over 25 years. This feels like any modern Ferrari versus like a 430, a 458, a 488, a new Ferrari Portofino. It just has that feel. It has the quirks, it has the feel, and it has the incredible driving dynamics that no other car in this category can give you right now. All right, guys, we're over at the engine compartment here. This is the heart of the animal. This is a 2.9 liter, 90 degree bi-turbo V6. This is a derivative of the Ferrari Portofino and the 488 engine, except it's got two cylinders that are not there. But think about it, they took the two cylinders out because they wanted to move the engine further back. They wanted to reduce the weight over the front axle, which gives it the razor sharp lightning response. Also, incredible fuel economy so far that I've, I've gotten. Uh, but like I said, you got the dual throttle bodies here, dual uh, intakes. There's an air filter back here underneath the engine cover. And that's also where the oil filter is with a cartridge, which I'll show you guys in a future video on how we do the oil changes. But something I want to just point across here is the structural design. Back here, you can see most cars will have a strut tower brace that goes from one to the other. This is structurally anchoring the front cowl directly to the aluminum extruded upright for the suspension mounting right here. Now, these aluminum uprights were incorporated by Ferrari starting with the 360 Modena. That was the first Ferrari that was ever mass produced using all aluminum production with partnerships with Alcoa. That really changed the game of Ferrari as an automotive manufacturer at 1999. Now, other car companies have come up with this um, use of aluminum extrusions and castings and bonded and riveted and carbon fiber and everything in between. Uh, Jaguar was another one in 2003 when they introduced the revised version of the XJ platform. Aston Martin also started using this. And what a lot of people don't understand is when you use aluminum and you use thick castings like this and you mount all your suspension points to it with aluminum subframes, a lightweight body, um, just everything in between, it makes the car react quicker it cancels out NVH because aluminum cancels out a lot of noise and vibration versus stamped steel. It makes the car stronger, makes it less uh, susceptible to torsional rigidity and flex. And in New York, on some of the worst roads, this car is solid as a rock. 
and that just shows the quality of engineering. Back here is the brake by wire. This is a continental system. It's called intelligent braking system. On the earlier cars, they were pretty damn bad. On the later cars, they reprogrammed. They're actually not that bad, but I'll talk more about it on the dry portion of the video. Uh, it's just one of those things that they had to incorporate, and I'll be honest with you, I, it was a safety uh, reason that they did that, and I'll talk more about it in the dry portion of the video. But here's the, the, the look at a carbon fiber. I mean, it's just a work of art. It really is. And wait until you see the interior on my car. It is just so cool. Absolutely incredible. So let's close the hood. I'm going to give you a quick walk around of the interior. And then we're going to get the camera and we're going to go for a ride. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the driving experience and why I actually bought a Quadrifoglio uh, from Alfa Romeo versus all the other cars I was looking at. But this car is special. It's very, very special. Uh, my other cars are very, very special. And those are cars that just appeal to me. So let's close this hood and show you the interior of this, this bad boy. This car has the black leather with the red stitching. This is all Potrana Frau leather. The same leather that is in every Ferrari and Maserati product. And this car has the carbon fiber Sparco race seats, which aesthetically look incredible. You can see that there. Look at all the detail. And the cool thing about these seats is that they didn't clear coat them. Whereas this stuff, all the fancy cosmetic stuff on the, on the interior, that's all clear coated. The seats are manufactured the exact same way you would manufacture a race car. This is out of the mold, out of the autoclave. This is not clear coated. You could feel it. It has a satin finish. Certain spots are a little bit drier than others, depending on the curves and how the carbon fiber was being pulled. This is all pre-preg carbon fiber, the same way every supercar is made in Italy. It has Ferrari paddle shifters, the longer paddle shifters that are mounted to the column. That is the way it should be done. And you guys could just see all the carbon fiber, all the detail. A lot of people complained about uh, this drive mode select and, and the DNA menu and all that. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm getting used to it and it's pretty easy. But you don't buy a car like this to play with technology. You buy a car like this for the heritage and for the driving dynamics. You don't buy this car to play with your phone and to play with apps. You buy this car to haul ass and have a hell of a good time doing it. And that's just what it does and it does it well, really, really well. And you guys can see all of that interior. It is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the carbon fiber in the back of the seats all exposed. You can see some of the seams here where it's a little dry as it comes out of the mold. I mean, that's just hand craftsmanship. And as a fabricator and as a craftsman, I love it. I understand how this is made. I know the process. I use the same process in my architectural business. Uh, and it's just something su super cool. Like someone like me, I just you know geek out over this stuff. Um, and I geek out that it's not perfect because that's the way it's done in real life. Now the back seat has pretty good room. You know, I'm five foot ten and a half, and I can fit back there no problem. I think if you're a little bit above 5'11", you're probably gonna hit your head on the roof. The car does not have a sunroof, which is smart because you don't put sunroofs in high performance cars. It's just a no-no. And they should have done Alcantara on the car, but they didn't. Now the only thing that I dislike about the interior, um, the bottom of the doors, it's cheap plastic. And you can see already, from me kicking it, it's getting pretty trash. But what I'm gonna do, I just ordered six yards of Alcantara from Italy, and I'm gonna rip the doors off, and I'm gonna stitch and recover this. When I get some time, uh, most likely over the winter, I'm gonna shoot some videos, and I'm also gonna offer that service for anybody that has a Giulia Quadrifoglio. I wanna actually finish off the interior where the factory left off. So let's get the camera in the car. Enough talking about the design and everything else. Let's have some fun. And like I was explaining to you in the beginning of the video about the suspension architecture and the materials and all of that, that is why this car is so good. It's the use of aluminum, the use of carbon fiber, and the use of race car Italian engineers from Ferrari that put their heart and soul into making this car one of the best that it is in its class. And it is the best sports sedan in its class. Now, as far as cars that are above this level, they're also higher priced, would be the M5, the E63, the RS Audis, and all of that. Those I call super sedans, because they have mega horsepower. They're 60 grand plus more than this car, if you load them up with options. And uh, this car, for what you're getting, you're getting a four-door Ferrari for under 100 grand, and it is just phenomenal. It is so comfortable. The Sparco seats, feel like they were custom tailored to my body. That's how comfortable they are. They make the seats of my Shelby feel horrible as far as comfort level goes. And this seat feels like it has a lot less padding, but it's the shape, it's the design, it's the materials of the carbon fiber, uh, just everything. The cabin is very, very quiet. It's very isolated. It's very smooth. And 
and right now we're in the D mode on the Alpha DNA selector. And like I said, for a daily driver, this is what I wanted. I wanted an automatic transmission. I wanted something unique. I wanted something special, something high performance. I was looking into an ATS-V. They stopped making them, and I looked into buying the used one. And I, I like the car. The car is incredible. The ATS-V was the best in this segment until this car came out. And a buddy of mine has one. He just picked it up. And I'm going to do some videos on the channel comparing this car to the ATS-V because that car really was the benchmark as far as chassis, the active differential, the steering response, the front end response, the turn in, everything. That car is phenomenal. Uh, for General Motors to take that Alpha platform, that is the best Alpha platform car you're going to get is the ATS-V. Uh, but this car is based on the Giorgio platform. This is going to be the foundation of the new Charger, the new Challenger, and most likely a bunch of other cars in the future. But, you know, FCA, they spent billions, I, I was told over $8 billion resurrecting the Alfa Romeo brand. And that's, that's a serious amount of money. So let's just go into race mode. And this is where this car comes alive. I mean, it's just, it goes from comfortable luxury car to all out animal. And you could feel, the one thing I want to talk about on this car, I've driven all of the new Ferraris and a lot of the new Ferraris have active rear steer. Uh, the F12s, the A12 Superfast, all of those cars. Now, this car, based on the suspension architecture, the geometry of the back end, and the active differential, it actually feels like it has active rear steer, but it doesn't. And we're, you know, we're riding on Pirelli Corset tires. Um, these are track tires. To be honest with you, my opinion, after driving the car for 48 hours, I feel that Alpha should offer these tires as an option. They should put a P4S or even a Pilot Super Sport just to make the car more livable. But a lot of guys that have a Quadrifoglio, this is not their only car. They have a lot of other cars in their collection. This is just another toy, kind of like it is for me. But I'm going to be using this car a hell of a lot more. God. The transmission is programmed just as good as any dual clutch you're going to get. And this is the Zaf 8-speed, same transmission that Aston Martin's using, same transmission that's in the uh, Hellcats from Dodge, and also like the Jaguar F-Type R's, those cars are using the same gearbox. But the programming logic in the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, I think, is the best. I mean, the speed that this thing picks up, it's incredible. It absolutely is incredible. This car will get you in trouble if you're not careful, let me tell you. That was a Huracan that just flew by. When that boost picks in and it throws you in the seat, my God, the second to third shift, the third to fourth shift, I tell you, if you're not capable of handling this power, it's going to scare you. And I'm trying to see if the audio is going to get picked up well by the camera, but if I open the windows down, it's just going to muffle the audio so much. And I don't really want to do that in this video. So we're in race mode now. Suspension tuning is phenomenal. Shock valving, spring rates, everything. It, it's just perfect, absolutely perfect. I am considering lowering the car for aesthetics, but to be honest with you, I do think a $200 set of lowering springs is probably gonna ruin the car, but I'll probably try it and I'll test it and I will report back to the world what I think they did or what they didn't do. But another thing too, a lot of journalists complain on this car is the brake by wire system. Now, the earlier versions were horrible. The late 18 model, like this one is, had a lot of reprogramming done, and things have gotten a lot better. It does take some getting used to. The way it feels in stop and go traffic, this brake by wire system in my particular car, if any of you guys have been in a muscle car from the 60s, you know, with a big cam, and you have power brakes, after you hit the brake pedal two times, you lose a lot of that vacuum in the power booster and you start inching up, inching up in stop and go traffic around a stoplight. That's how this feels in stop and go traffic. It takes getting used to. 
you just have to have a steady pressure on the pedal at all times. You can't just be like, you know, having your foot resting on the pedal the way a lot of modern cars are. In this particular car, you can't do that. So you have to get used to it. You have to change a little bit of your driving style and a little bit of your habits. But once you get into the brakes, the braking system is phenomenal. And the reason why I feel, and a lot of people around the world feel this is the best sports sedan in the world right now, is because of the steering. The car is so direct, it's so amazing and sharp how this front end cuts in and bites with the active differential. You can feel the car rotate when you're going into a corner. It's got total confidence, total stability. That's what BMW lost on their newer generation M cars, the M4 and the M3. It's got a dead zone in the steering. It's overly assisted with uh, a, 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 a synthetic heavy weight to it. This doesn't have that. There's no modes to change the steering in this car because they want you to have the lightning quick steering in every mode. And, that, and I actually like that because it doesn't have a big tire in the front. It has a 245. And if you look at some of the tires on a lot of the Ferraris, like the 458, the 488, they don't have a 305 or a 315. Same thing with the Porsche cars. You know, the, the mindset, what these engineers want, they want a smaller footprint. They want sharper, faster, linear, and more direct feedback coming from the front. You throw a fatter tire in the front, now you change the whole dynamic of the chassis, the turn in, to, you know, it, it especially starts to push a little bit more when you when you get on it because there's just a much more contact patch. But, you know, this formula works and that's why they stick with it. And that's why I think it's, it's superb. This car does not have anywhere in this, in the uh, travel of the steering, a dead zone where it feels numb. Like, look at this. I'm on the highway, and I'm gonna show you. Look at that. It's perfect. It's like perfectly connected. There's no soft spot in between where you would feel like a mushy feel from like a an isolator or a coupler or, or backlash in the rack and pinion. No, this is like dead on the way it should be. The driving position is really good. You're a little higher, uh, you know, than some cars, but this has a power operation to raise and lower the seat, which I actually like, rather than the lever. I mean, this thing is just incredible. It really is. And guys, like I said, I've been looking for another daily driver for a while uh, because like I said, the Shelby's just totally beating me up every day. I, I just can't take it. And I also don't want to depreciate that car anymore by putting too many miles on it. So, you know, I was looking at a bunch of cars. I was gonna get the M2 competition package. Now, here's why I didn't get that car. The one that I was looking at was a 2018 and I realized after research, I wanted a 2019. Well, the 2019s couldn't be had that easily. Uh, they're marking them up. And when I got quotes on insurance, the insurance for the M2, and I'm in my 40s with a perfect driving record, was $4,800 a year. And I thought that was insane to pay that kind of money for a car with 400 horsepower. The insurance on the Alpha Julia Quadrifoglio, for me, in New York, by the New York City area, with 505 horsepower, is $1,400 a year, okay? This car got the highest crash test rating in the segment, and that's why the insurance is cheaper on this car, and that's another reason, if any of you guys are out there looking for a car, think about the insurance, because BMWs and Mercedes insure sometimes two to three times higher than a lot of cars, but, I mean, this car is just so damn good. And this is where the car shines, back twisty roads. intoxicating it's intoxicating I never in my life owned a sedan that felt this good and I've had all of them I had the Jaguar XJRs the S-Type R's E63's E55's M5's I had them all this thing is this car is in a different in a different league altogether the grip and the turn in Woo. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, this car is incredible. This is the first video on my channel, but guys, I will promise you, there's going to be a hell of a lot of videos on this car, because this car excites me. This is an emotional car. That's why I bought this car. It's an emotional car. It's rare, it's different, nobody has it in my area, and it just checks off all the boxes that I wanted to add another car to my life. carves up every road you throw this car at it just carves it up it's incredible the C63S does not feel like this and the M3 and M4 do not feel like this at all See, like the difference between the two cars that I have at home, the Shelby is so incredible. But that car, you have to put so much into it to get so much out of it. It, it really, it, it physically drains you, it mentally drains you. It's, it's so powerful, it's so big, it's, it's got so much grip. This car, it's got the balance, it's got the finesse, it's got world-class engineering behind it. You, you feel it, as soon as you go down the road, you feel it in this car over for a second I want to just clear up this road a little bit so this is really an interesting car because you know Maserati came back to the United States in 2002 they had their 4200 they had their Spider, and those were really cool cars they really were they had you know the, the 4.2 liter motor which was now the derivative of the 430 engine um, you know from back then and they had the single clutch F1 style gearbox which was good those cars were raw they had the sound you know, you actually had to drive those cars. Then they had the Quattroporte, which I felt at the time, in 2004, was a four-door Ferrari. And that really was, because that was the only car coming out of Italy that had the real paddles, single-clutch transmission, and it had that sound. It had, it had that real Italian heritage in it. Lo and behold, they weren't selling a lot of cars because people complained how clunky they were, they were too loud, they were too noisy. Then Maserati completely changed the brand, made the cars heavier, threw in a bad automatic, uh, the handling just wasn't there. They still sound great, but they don't have that feel that the older Maseratis had. And I'm really glad that Alfa Romeo stepped up and took that position of bringing this car to market because this car has, not only does it have that feeling, it has a hell of a lot more that those cars didn't have in this chassis dynamics. of technology and, and you know I'm fortunate that I've seen it all and I've been around it for so long to uh, to really appreciate the progression of you know cars in general and cars in this segment it's unbelievable unbelievable it's like everywhere you go I just want to like let the car go in front of me and just sit there because I want to carve the corners hit red lines so quickly in this car so you really have to you know be on your game with you know shifting at the right rpm but uh and the car is still in what they call break-in mode because when you put it into race mode it'll say you know break-in mode active or whatever so i'm sure the car is probably going to get a little bit more hairier when i get some more miles on it the audio could come out you guys can hear the exhaust I mean it sounds good I'm I'm gonna change the exhaust I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff to this car I actually bought a module uh, to open up the exhaust valves and all the other different modes um, I got air intake system coming I got a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna do to this car because I just love the car and that's just what I love to do is modify them
I do wish the car had a 9,000 RPM limiter. That would make it a hell of a lot better. But you're kind of limited to what you can with a twin turbo V6. So I'm just having some fun. Man. You know, the car got dropped off like 10 o'clock at night on Friday and I had so much stuff going on, I didn't even get a chance to drive it. Then yesterday I had all kinds of stuff going on with work and uh, today I'm alone, <laughs> had the house to myself, I've been playing with the car all day with friends and uh, it's been a great time. Oh my god. I'm gonna do a hard stop, we're gonna see how the brakes hold up, hold on, let's do it right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> she slows down. I saw a cool road over here that I'm gonna try to go on that I never was on before. I just hope it's worth it. Oh yeah, nicely freshly paved twisties right here. Yeah, we need more sound in this car. I want I want a louder exhaust. That's gonna be probably one of the first things I do. I already picked out a couple of ones I like. I just gotta see which one I'm gonna go with. Oh man, forget about it. If you guys are in the market for this type of a car, forget about looking at an M3. You guys gotta look at this. This car is expensive to buy. This car is very expensive to lease. And that's also another reason I like it, is that it keeps it more of an exclusive club of what you're gonna see driving around in your neighborhood. And I like that. I like having something that nobody has. Oh my god. Alright, so guys, I'm heading back now. So, I hope you guys liked very first Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio video on the Auto Fanatic channel. I'm really uh, thankful to be able to have gotten this car. I ordered this car for one of my number one clients. He was kind enough to let me take his special order car and he's just gonna order another one. That's just because he's a car collector and he has more cars and he knows what to do with it and he's never even in the United States anyway. So it's a lot of fun. This car, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of engineering. I'm gonna go through so many things uh, on my channel from aesthetic upgrades, performance upgrades, driving dynamics. Uh, I'm gonna try different tires in this car, different wheels, winter tires. Uh, I'm gonna do it all. I wanna pretty much do everything that I did on my channel for the GT350. I'm gonna do it for the Alpha Quadrifoglio. And I want people around the world to watch these videos, to get more feedback, learn more about the car, its potential, and what it could do, along with a host of performance parts, reliability, quality, and everything in between. So please like, subscribe, and share. Get this video out there. Um, this car is incredible. I can't stop driving it, literally. I haven't driven the Shelby since I took delivery of this car. That's how much I love this car. And that's how much it's impressed me so far. And like I said, a little bit of the quirks, I'm not gonna really talk about it because the car is so good for a driving enthusiast and someone that buys cars based on emotion, based on pedigree and history that you overlook the little issue that people talk about with the brake pedal. You overlook the infotainment system. Uh, it's just, it doesn't matter. You're not buying this car for that. You're buying it for the chassis. You're buying it for the brakes. You're buying it for this engine, this Ferrari design engine. Uh, all the suspension componentry on this car, you know, it's all cast at the foundry where all the Ferrari parts are, are cast in Maranello. I mean, that's why you're buying this car. You know, if you want to get something else, yeah, there's a lot of cars out there. You can go get an AMG, you can go get the M3, you get the M3 Competition, you get the new M3 CS. The M3 CS is $110,000. I'm going to tell you now, man, that, that's a cool car, but I'll still take this car over that any day of the week. And I actually did consider that car. But I don't know, I just think they're just trying to do too much to, to make that car more on the edge. But unless they rip out the steering system and start over with a clean slate and get the old school BMW steering and front end back into the new cars, 
I'll stick with an M2 competition package. If you're going to go buy one, that's the one. But uh, if you need a sedan, that's not going to work for you. And that's another reason why I didn't get the M2 competition back. If I wanted an automatic, I really need a sedan. I want the comfort. I'm in the car a lot all day long. So, see you guys soon. Uh, autofanatic at yahoo.com. Please go to my website, auto-fanatic.com. There's going to be a lot of stories in the lifestyle news section on the Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio and everything I talk about along the way with the ownership. So, see you guys soon. Appreciate the support. Let's get this channel to grow uh, some more by the end of the year with some great, exciting new content. See you guys later.